So with the thousand of choices that we have in the world of monologues to choose from, we have to find which one is best for us. What's going to be best to portray to our audience that we're going to be in front of, the panel of judges that's going to be watching us and deciding, hey, this guy's a good actor, he's not a good actor, it's a great monologue for him, or it's not a great monologue for him. So the first thing that I want you to realize is when you pick your monologue, whether or not you audition for a part and you're using this monologue and you get booked for the part or not, it doesn't define if you're a good actor. People believe it defines that they're a good actor or not. When they go to an audition and they don't get the part, they think, oh, I must not be very good. My monologue sucks. Something's not working. If you find that you're auditioning and that a lot of your monologues that you're using are not working and you're going to maybe a specific monologue, then maybe you can decide, hey, it's time for me to change. This monologue that I'm using right now isn't doing me much benefit, not much good. Maybe I should move on to something else. Or you can get a second eye on it. You can go to a coach and ask them to see your monologue and see what they think. If they think, hey, what you did was great. Or what you did was, hey, it was okay. It could use improvement. Or maybe they have something totally different. But this video is going to be one that's going to help you choose the right monologue for you. Now, I can't tell you specifically which monologue is the best 100% monologue for you because everyone is different. Some monologues that are going to be great for me are going to be terrible for you. And some monologues that are going to be amazing for you are going to be horrific for me. Part of it has to do with how old you are, what you look like, how tall you are, how small you are, all these different things that benefit the monologue and can heighten the monologue. So what you want to do, first thing number one, when choosing and deciding upon a monologue, is to find a monologue that really suits your age. Find a monologue that suits your age. Please find a monologue that suits your age. There are so many people, when they're looking through a monologue, they completely either forget this factor or they decide, you know what, I really like this monologue. Screw the whole age thing, I'm still gonna do it. Admire you for that, props for that. And it may work in some circumstances, so I don't wanna deteriorate you from those, but mostly those type of monologues, if they don't suit you age-wise, are going to be really unsuccessful choices for you. When people are looking at you and you're giving a monologue, they want to know that you're an actor who understands themselves and the material that you're given. Because if you go and you're going to audition for a part, they want to know that, hey, this actor can do the part. They're going to understand it just fine and well enough to be able to do it the way I want, or adjust, or do different things. So with your monologue, you really want to make sure that this piece of text that you have is one that suits your age. So you're going to have to do research on it, but make sure it's one that suits your age range. Now when you have this monologue, make sure that you learn this monologue 110%. Go overboard on it. Know your monologue. Don't beat it to death where you can't do it anymore and it doesn't seem great or amazing or have the life that you originally maybe brought into it, but do work the monologue in a way that you can still be fluid and you can still adjust and move and create. Because if you do audition and you do have a great monologue, the people watching you may say, that was an amazing job. I really, really liked it. Do you think you could do that same monologue again, but try adding this into it? And then if you as an actor say, oh, okay, great, yeah, 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 perfect idea, and you go and do your monologue, and you give the exact same thing, they're not gonna like that. So you wanna be careful of that. The next thing is when you're picking a monologue, be careful of the monologues that are super well known. Reason for this being is that even if you do an amazing job at it, you might do a fantastic working of this piece. If it's a very popular monologue, these people, judges or directors or whoever you're auditioning for, has seen these monologues probably then performed before in the whole play. And they're going to be judging you off of that other performance, especially if they really enjoyed that performance. So if you come in with a monologue and you say, hey, all right, I'm going to do to be or not to be, to be or not to be, that is the question. Whether it is, and you do your whole speech and your whole monologue, it may be a great monologue, you may do an amazing job, but they're also going to compare you to the amazing people who have done the monologue and speech before, who have been very highly trained, and there could be some bias because they also saw the whole show. Whereas for you, they're only going to be seeing you in this two-minute instance 
of portraying the monologue in the piece. So in the era of choosing your monologue and finding the right piece, choose one that suits your age range. Know it so well that you can be fluid with the piece and make sure that it's not something that's super overly done and overly popular. If you can bring something to it, great. And if it's meant to be and you really have to do that monologue, then do it. But if you can choose another monologue, which I think you can, that is just as great, just as amazing, that you can do a perfect job at, that suits your age range, then go for that monologue instead, because then you won't have extra judging on you. Hope you guys have a great day. Go ahead and subscribe to this channel, give it a like, and I'll see you all next time.